It's a cold winter day in Minneapolis. It's a good day to go thrifting. On today's trip to the thrift store, I found this old serving cart. It was in bad shape, but I liked the style and I felt that it was worth putting some work into. So I took it home for some restoration. The worst of the damage was on the two shelves. It looked like they had gotten wet and there were lots of black stains from water sitting on it. And also the particle board underneath the veneer had absorbed the water and swelled up and that caused the veneer to crack and started peeling away in some spots. I wasn't sure if I could save that veneer, but I wanted to give it a shot. The legs and the pieces that went around the border of the shelves were solid walnut, and they also looked like they had been wet, but they didn't get damaged too badly, uh, at least not as badly as the veneer did on the shelves. It was too cold to work outside, so I brought the cart into my semi-heated porch and started disassembly. This wasn't too difficult. I just had to remove some nuts from some bolts and it all came apart. I wanted to make an attempt to save the veneer, so I started by removing the finish, and I did this by scraping it off with the card scraper. And while I had the scraper out, I also scraped off the finish from the pieces of trim around the edge of the shelf and the legs. Once the finish was removed, I had to address the black water stains on the veneer. And to do this, I applied some oxalic acid. Here's a time lapse, and you can see that just after about 15 minutes, the stain had lightened considerably. It wasn't completely gone yet, but I felt that with a few more applications and maybe a little sanding, I would be able to save the veneer at least as far as the stains go. But first, I wanted to try to remove the veneer from the particle board backing. If I couldn't get the veneer off of the particle board, then it wouldn't be worth putting any more work into trying to remove the stains, since that particle board can't be saved. So I would have to get the veneer off to put it on a new piece of plywood. But before removing the veneer, I had to remove the trim pieces that went around the edge. This ended up being a little bit more difficult than I expected. Some of the corner blocks looked like they had been glued in relatively recently, and the glue that was visible around the edge looked like it could have been epoxy, which made it more difficult to get the pieces apart. I ended up using a heat gun to attempt to soften the glue and a hammer. Some of the corner blocks I just had to break apart and then I just make new ones later.
Once the trim was removed, I tried using some heat to remove the veneer, but I could tell that that wasn't going to work. So I thought since water had caused the veneer to start peeling up in the first place and caused all this damage, maybe if I got it wet again, it would peel off completely. So I put it in a tub of water and left it for about a whole day. And it did eventually start coming loose from the particle board. But what I didn't count on is that this sheet of veneer was actually made from a few different sheets that were glued together. So instead of coming off in one big veneer sheet, it came off in pieces. And this is what I was left with. At this point, I decided it would be too much work to try to piece this all back together. So I moved on to plan B. Plan B was to cut out two new shelves from some half inch plywood and apply some new walnut veneer to the plywood. I usually like to apply veneer using contact cement because it adheres instantly and doesn't need any clamping. But in this case, I wanted to try to use wood glue because the contact cement has a really strong smell and it was too cold to do this outside. So I had to do it inside my house. And I was trying to avoid filling the house with that smell. So I applied the wood glue to the plywood and to the veneer, laid the veneer on top, and then stacked the two pieces on top of each other and gathered as many clamps as I could find. Unfortunately, when I took the clamps off the next day, I found that I didn't have enough clamping pressure on there. And it's hard to see in the video, but there were bubbles all over the boards. Uh, the veneer just didn't get pressed down evenly enough. So that didn't work. And it was on to plan C. Plan C was to cut two new shelves, again out of plywood, and this time try to stain them to match the rest of the cart. I wasn't too confident going into this one because I know it's difficult to stain plywood without it looking blotchy, but I decided to give it a try anyway. I started by sealing the plywood with some shellac, and this would help to control the absorption of the stain and hopefully make it less blotchy. And then I went over it with some gel stain. And as I expected, it didn't look that great. It became clear that it was really never gonna look very good. So I scrapped that idea and went on to plan D. Plan D was to do what I probably should have done in the first place and just apply some new walnut veneer using contact cement this time. And to deal with the smell, I just opened some windows and wore a mask. And I just used the same pieces of plywood that I had tried to stain. And I applied some contact cement with a roller and applied the cement to the piece of veneer too. And then I laid the veneer piece onto the plywood and just used my hand at first to smooth it out and make sure there were no bubbles in it. And then I went over it with a piece of wood with one edge that had been rounded over a little bit with some sandpaper. And this is a technique that I saw recommended by the veneer manufacturer this is supposed to apply more pressure to the veneer than you'd be able to get with something like a J roller. Applying all that pressure on the veneer with that board did leave some marks, uh, just where it kind of pressed the grain down a little bit. 
And to try to get rid of these marks, I just wet the veneer down with some water so it would raise the grain back up again. Wetting down the veneer also helps to show what the color will be if a clear finish was applied. And here's a piece of the walnut trim that will go around the shelf. And to my eye, the veneer looks more brown and just lighter overall than the piece of trim. So I wanted to try to get it closer to that trim. And to do that, I used some stain. To find the correct color stain for the veneer, I took four stains that I already had and I applied them to some scraps of veneer. And the two on the left are gel stains and the two on the right are regular oil liquid stains. And I felt like the one second from the left looked like it would work the best. And that color is called Gunstock and it's from Minwax. Before applying the stain, I gave it a quick sanding by hand just to sand down the grain that was raised by wetting down the veneer earlier. And then I wiped on the stain. And then wiped off any excess. Once the stain was dry, I applied a few coats of satin wipe-on oil-based polyurethane. The legs, the handles, and the trim that goes around the shelves all had a really nice color all on their own. So I didn't need to use any stain and I didn't use any polyurethane on these either. I just put on a clear Danish oil. I put on two coats and the second coat I applied with some 600 grit sandpaper just to make it extra smooth. The Danish oil can sometimes have a bit of a flat look once it's dry. So I also waxed these pieces once the Danish oil was dry and it just gives it a little bit of a sheen and a little bit of protection from moisture. I used a Dremel tool and some metal polish to clean up the metal parts. There was some particle board that was stuck to the slot in the trim pieces, so I cleaned that out with a chisel. And then I also had to widen that slot a bit because the new plywood top was a little bit thicker than the particle board that was in there. So to widen that slot, I used a router and I just set up a straight edge as a guide and took off just a hair, just enough to fit the half inch plywood in there. And then it was time to glue the trim back onto the shelves. And this was a little difficult because the trim pieces were all just slightly different sizes. This one, for instance, is almost a 16th off from one end to the other. 
So it was a little difficult to get it all lined up and square, but I got it the best I could and applied some glue to the ends of the trim pieces and clamped them together. And then I made some new corner blocks and glued those in. And I had to drill new holes through the corner blocks for the leg bolts. I decided to also add some screws to the corner blocks for some extra strength. Once that glue was dry, I could put the legs back on. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.